Hi there, welcome back. I'm posting again because I really don't feel like doing much else today. Not feeling super great. I had a very active weekend and luckily I got today off of work for Indigenous Peoples Day, formerly known as Columbus Day in the US, but before I started feeling like crap today, however, I got to do some word sprints. So today I kind of wanted to talk about my first real experience doing word sprints and then I also want to talk about um, how I'm loosely plotting my novel, really more so based on research and um, kind of filling in the gaps and details, but not focusing or worrying so much on the outline. Since I've never written a book before, I can't say whether this is a good idea or not. It's more so just something that I think it's going to work for me. It's kind of what I want to do right now. I feel like if I start outlining, I'm just going to start writing. And it's really hard, by the way, it's really hard not to do that, especially whenever I was doing the sprints today. I find myself wanting to just go ahead and start writing the novel, especially because I have this idea and I, I want to start getting those ideas onto paper um, and playing with some of the conversations and scenes. So I think having Preptober, even though I was kind of like talking about how I didn't love it so much in the last video, I kind of get it. Um, because it helps like fuel that fire without doing the work. Like I don't want to take any words away from November and then hopefully once November starts, it's like when you did all of that research and preparation for that paper that you had to write and then it's the night before because you procrastinated for months during the semester and you just write it all out. That's, that's at least how I did it. So I did some sprints today and I have the laptop that I've been using to write. So if I'm looking that down, that's why. Um, and they were 20 minute sprints. I'll put the link to the YouTube video um, for the person. I cannot remember her name, but she was a sweetheart. Um, they weren't like really strict sprints. I found her sprints through the Heart Breathings community on Facebook. So if you're already in that community on Facebook, you'll, you'll see her sprints. But if you're not, um, I do suggest that you join. I will link to Heart Breathing, Sarah Cannon's channel for writers and planners. Um, and I will link to the YouTube channel. But anyway, so the sprint session was set up to do four 20 minute sprints. But again, I wasn't feeling super well today. I got three of those 20 minute sprints in and my I was done. Like that was it. And I knew how exhausting writing could be, but since I haven't like used those muscles in a while, I got fatigued really quickly. Like after the second sprint, I was already starting to fill it and I was kind of ready to stop, but I'm glad that I didn't. For the first 20 minute sprint, oh, and by the way, I just, I literally pantsed all of these. Some of these are ideas that I've had for stories in the past, um, one of them especially. And it just like, I I just came up with a name, like one of the names was Chernobyl, which does it, that's not a name, but it was a name that I did for a raccoon. If you remember me talking about a day in the life of like an animal or critter, I did, I kind of did like a raccoon waking up in the morning and finding that one of her babies is missing and what's she gonna do? What's it like? And I named the raccoon raccoon. Now, how do I pronounce that word? Anyway, I named the mom Chernobyl and the daughter Samantha. I don't know. So <laughs> the first 20 minute sprint, uh, was 445 words, which these are really, really like high numbers. Please keep in mind, like I was a journalist. I, I do write like that is my, that is my only skill. So if you're not a fast writer, that's, that's fine. Uh, the first one was 445. The second one was 448. Um, and to be fair, my husband did like wake up during the first sprint and started talking to me and I didn't want to be rude so I just like spoke back to him and 
that sounds weird. I, I was happy that he was up and he was going to go get breakfast and wanted to see if I wanted anything. Anyway, so like I had little interruptions during my sprints. So 445, 448, and then the third one was like a whopping 557. And I owe this one to being based on, this was the one that like, I knew I had had this story idea before. It has something to do with this creepy attic that was in my childhood home. I, I always had like this weird uh, paranoia about the attic when I was a kid. So like, it was super easy to knock out those 557 words. I, I was, full on prepared. Um, but it, it just all flowed very well. So that was for a whopping total of an hour of sprinting of 1,450 words with an average of 483.3 words each 20 minutes. So if I did 20 minute sprints, um, I would have to do 4.14 or just round up to five in order to get my minimum of 2,000 words a day, which is what I'm banking on because I'm assuming that out of the 30 days of November, I'll probably only reasonably be able to write 25 of the days because most likely I'm going to be sick or I'm going to need a mental health day or I'm going to have a really long day at work and crash right afterwards and just, I will have skipped writing in the morning because I was like, I can do it later and then I don't do it later. So all of those scenarios. But one of the things that I found is that 20 minutes, it doesn't feel quite long enough to me. It takes about one to two, sometimes even three minutes, especially for these where I didn't have like a clear idea of what I was going to go in and write. Like I didn't have the scene um, picked out before I started the sprint, even on that third one where I had had this idea before, it took a minute for me to be like, oh yeah, I want to write about that. So it took a couple minutes for me to figure out, okay, what do I want to write? So maybe stretching that out to 25 or 30 minute sprints would probably be the best for me. The scheduled rest times, break times between each sprint was five minutes, which was over so quickly. I've never had five minutes go by faster. Um, so I, I would definitely need more than five minutes, especially for today, just because I felt extra fatigued. A day where I'm feeling a lot more motivated and kind of not as low energy, then maybe five minutes will be perfect. So I'm thinking of if I do sprints on my own that aren't like with a live online group or um, a live in-person event, then I'll probably give myself a rough estimate of five to 10 minutes. So when the first timer goes off at five minutes, then I know, okay, start to get back in the mindset of it. And then 10 minutes max, get back to writing. Do not let yourself uh, lose momentum or lose motivation or get distracted by something else. That's the real hurdle that I'm worried about is whenever doing sprints, taking breaks and getting distracted because i i'm definitely um even as a runner i i'm more uh long distance i i like a slower pace but honestly this was great once i got started the pace picked up and it it just it worked wonderfully and then even a a few minutes before the timer would go off um i noticed myself curious and becoming aware of the time limit again because while you're writing you forget about that you become completely entranced in whatever idea it is and um i do find myself like really diving into it to the point where when my husband got up and opened the bedroom door it, it creaked and the the story that i was writing at the time was a ghost story and it actually like scared me like i was like ah! um which is just so exciting that I even had that experience today, even on something that I wasn't like my official story and just like this little idea, but it was, it was actually a pretty fun idea. I might keep writing on that. So a few minutes uh, before the buzzer would go off, I would notice myself becoming aware of that time limit again. And then it kind of like kicked me into overdrive. Like, okay, let's get this thought out. Let's get this scene done. Let's get to a good stopping point. 
And so um, I don't know if that's necessarily going to continue to serve me in the future or if it's be go uh, or if it's going to become something that I kind of have to um, work through, like it'll become a deterrent or an issue. Yeah, we'll just go with issue. So we'll see. So that's the first part about what I wanted to talk about today was the sprint. Long story short, loved it. I definitely think that I'm going to do those in the future. And hopefully with that method, I can do about an hour and a half to two hours of sprints each day. And that'll get me my uh, work count for the day that I'm wanting. But the other thing that I wanted to talk about is plotting because I'm not doing a regular plot um, I am following advice from Sarah Cannon and some other YouTubers, um, on ways to build your novel and the idea. I definitely, I'm definitely going to use her scene writing workbook, Sarah Cannon's, uh, if you sign up for her email list then uh, you get this resource library, it's amazing. And I'm following along with the um, YouTube videos as well. So I'm using Google Docs and I've pretty much got this split up into eight different prep documents. So they're in no particular order, I basically did um, one large brain dump in one document where I took all of my notes from my notebook, which is in the living room, should have probably brought it in here, but I started organizing it. So I was like, okay, what are the different categories of notes that I need to keep? So if I haven't mentioned it already, I'll go ahead and tell you the project name is Project Demon. That's all I'll say about it. Um, but... <laughs> I'm so excited about it though. Uh, and it's not, it, I know I said I was writing horror earlier. It's not super scary. Or at least hope it should. It's right now it's not going to be. We'll see what it ends up. But anyway, so what I ended up after pulling all of my notes in and, and kind of breaking them down into thoughtful categories, I ended up with seven and then later eight different documents where I'm organizing all of my thoughts. So one is character development. So right now, all I really have are names, maybe a sentence or two, and then some thoughtful questions on things that I either need to figure out before Nano starts or things that'll help me in my writing once it starts as kind of like prompts, as ways to okay, well, what is this person's origin? Why are they this now? That's what I have in character development. Um, an exam I have one, two, I have two that are based on like real world research that I am conducting. Uh, one of them I will tell you is demonology notes. It's project demon. So this is kind of tricky because I don't necessarily want this to be like a strictly Christian or um, to get more specific Catholic, Catholic, Catholic like demon story. I've recently found out that there are other types of exorcist and demon movies. So I want to look more into other examples of pagan demons and Jewish exorcisms and well now I already gave like the other portion of it and I don't feel like editing that. So the other document that I have is exorcism notes and this is like so much fun. It was great going into Barnes and Noble and when they came up to me like I didn't go out looking for help. I, I'm, I'm not that quirky but when the lady was like asking me can I help you with anything I had already looked through all the sections I swear I looked through all of them and I found one book and I was like can you help me find a book on demonology or possessions and Barnes and Noble employees are like the best she's like yeah like no questions asked like super helpful super sweet so I found another book uh, that is inter they're both interesting <laughs> One's from a psychologist perspective and one is from an exorcist perspective. So I get like both sides of the coin. So I've got two different documents 
to organize my notes there. And then I have a document that is just for world building, time and place, um, culture, laws. There's lots of laws uh, like currently existing around exorcisms in certain areas. The Catholic Church has its own policy. So getting an idea of what already exists, if I do decide to make my own alternate universe, then it'll give me ideas for the types of laws or societal um, dogma or thought zeitgeist around these, I guess that's not the right use of the word zeitgeist. No, I don't think so. That's okay. So anyway, just figuring out all of those things. What else do I have in world building? So right now I have time, place, society, culture, laws, politics, and education. There's really not a lot in this one. Um, it's very minimal right now. Just basically as I'm watching things, as I'm researching, I'm just kind of filling this out as I go whilst I'm coming up with things. The fifth document is probably the one with the most in it right now, and that is scene ideas. Now, this may sound like an outline, and it kind of is, except they're not in a specific order right now, and I definitely have a ton of gaps. So basically, any sort of scene idea that I have, I just throw it in there. It's organized into three different categories, and then I've got them highlighted based on whose perspective I think I'm going to be writing from. I've got two main perspectives, so sometimes it's obvious it's going to be this one main character or it'll be the other main character. And then if it could be either or, I just highlight it as yellow and move on. I've got a loose outline going right now, but really it's more so of like a shopping list and I'll figure it out more as I go along. So research notes are basically other questions that I need to ask and some of it is having um, them answered. So for instance, one example of a category that I have in research notes are Latin phrases that I'm picking up from movies that I'm watching or the books that I'm reading, as well as Bible verses. So this would also be certain aspects of psychology that I think I would need to understand in order to write about this. Uh, these would include uh, fear of death and disorder as in chaos, um, hypnosis, effects on the young and old for exorcisms. And then, um, oh, this one was so much fun. I actually did this like little brainstorming exercise with my husband. So what physiological effects could cause a recently possessed person to become, to begin feeling agitated, moody, and sick? So just thinking about like, okay, you've been possessed by a demon, what happens to your body? That like, before you know it's a possession, like, oh, I'm just sick, oh, I'm not feeling well. And I, I realize I say that whilst not feeling well, but one of my best friends was like, oh, you should be fine, just don't play with a Ouija board. And I'm not playing with a Ouija board, so I think I, I should be safe. I am uh, blessing the apartment this evening. But so my husband and I went through some different lists of like, oh, this could happen, this could happen, and focusing on very real, tangible, uh, physical symptoms of what might uh, occur to you if you are possessed. I know I seem very excited about that. Um, it was a fun time. Anyway, so the next one is kind of a subset of the world building, and that's, there's this organization within the book that I'm writing. And I wanted to kind of get clearer on the culture of this organization. What are its rules? What is the leader like? You know, what are some of the things that they do, their normal practices? So even if I built out the world, I wanna know what the world within the world is like for some of the minor characters as well. And 
around the um, one of the main characters. And then I have a, a the most recent document that I added was I, I've titled this Atmospherics. And so this one I came up with while I was watching, I think The Conjuring, and there were just like some really moody, spooky things that happened, like crows cawing in the distance. And I, I wanted to pick up on some of that more five senses types of things. So anything that I thought of that felt like a very good descriptive detail to kind of give that vibe, that that ooky spookiness. And I, I know I just said it's not a scary book, it's not horror, but I mean, I gotta have some spookiness in there if there are going to be demons. So I started writing down some of those things that I was thinking of as far as like those five senses. How can I how can I see that the temperature is changing? How does it feel, smell, taste, you know? So um, what am I hearing? You know what the five senses are. But anyway, so that is pretty much where I'm at right now with my plotting. Um, I am continuing to do lots and lots of research, lots and lots of prep. Um, and I will do at least a couple more sprints. I have some on my calendar. Again, it just depends on my workout schedule and my work schedule and then just time with hubby. And also I'm volunteering this weekend. I'm feeling very overwhelmed just thinking about all of it. But um, I'm still very excited and it has been I, I'm not, I haven't lost steam yet, and I'm so worried that I'm going to lose steam before November 1st. So I'm trying to pace myself because I don't want to use up all of, all of that fuel, all of that fire. Um, I want to, I want to keep my, my torch going. So anyways, I hope that this was helpful in any sort of way, even if it was, you know, a little bit motivating or just fun to hear some different ideas of how someone new is doing prepped over who's never done this before. Uh, again, like, comment, subscribe if you like inconsistent YouTube channels. And uh, let me know if you're doing NaNoWriMo in the comments what are you writing about if you want to share? And yeah, alrighty. Well, Sir Clive, I guess, did not decide to grace us with his presence. Um, I had already fed him before the video started. So I'm sorry, maybe next time. But have a great day. Thank you so much and happy writing.